What's going on, everybody? Cigar Titan here once again with my good friend, Brother Stogie. Say hello to the people. Titan fam. And Brother Stogie, this is our second ever live event that we're doing today. And who do we have on the show today? We have the writers and producers of Hand Roll. And directors. And directors. And you know what I'm saying? Multifaceted. Yes. What's, it? <laughs> what's the name? That is... Jesse Maru uh-huh. and Steve Garabine. Yes. And and we confirmed that before we came on here. They said that was close enough, so I'm going with that. We're good. Okay, I thought you were going to be safe, you know what I'm saying, by Steve. You know what I'm saying? Steve M, you know what I'm saying? Jesse, you know what I'm saying? Jesse B, you know what I'm saying? That's right. And so we're already getting a few people. We're going to give everybody a couple of minutes here to jump on and get into the chats. Smoke awesome. a vet. What up? Come on. Grab a smoke. Grab a drink. Smoke a bit and S O T L. Let's see. You got your lady with you, you got your wife with you. That's what's up. Bring the couples in. There you go. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So this was I was really excited to get both of them on the show. Both of us have seen the documentary. Yes, but Sogi, what'd you think? I thought it was, no, you know, it was pretty cool, especially for someone that I always, I always think that if, you, if you're going to get into something, yep. that you kind of know what the, where the origins are from. Yep. So I kind of I kind of compared Hand Road to, um, what was it, Pumping Iron? Yes. The Pumping Iron. Yeah. So you know, I, did, I was bodybuilding, you know what I'm saying, back in the day, you know, maybe three years ago. I ain't going to date myself too far, you know, <laughs> I, I still got it. You right, know right, what right, I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. But I figured if you're going to be bodybuilding, you got to know about the Arnold Schwarzenegger. You, you do. You yes. got to know about, you know, the Frank Zane. That's right. So if you're smoking cigars and you you smoke a different stove, you want to know what the Maduros are and the what the Connecticut side and where they are, come from, where they come and from, who the manufactures Oregon, them. You need to know about, you know, what I'm saying the Fuentes. That's you know, right. Where the Padrones come from. Yep. So that's where Hand comes in. There. That's right. So we're gonna go ahead and run a quick trailer for the movie Hand and when we come back, guys, we'll have on. Just in case you haven't seen it, because we told you to watch it already before it's live. <laughs> But we're going to play a snippet. So at least you have some questions to ask when we come back. That's right. And then we'll come back with, we got y'all, uh, Titan with, we got y'all. with Jesse and Steve. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> it goes back to the discovery of America. When our ancestors smoked their traditional cigars, that was their direct connection with the gods. So I'm the fifth generation during uh, 173 years. This is like a labor of love, and you got to wait for the tobacco, and the tobacco will tell you when it's ready. It's almost impossible for one cigar maker to try to copy another cigar maker. Cuban cigars are absolutely the best cigars in the world. And there are so many Cubans that also doesn't know a lot of tobacco, talk a lot. Doesn't know a lot. You blend great tobacco with great tobacco, you're gonna make great cigars. You have shit tobacco with shit tobacco, you're gonna make shit cigars. And it's as simple as that. It's not that complicated. It's all about the egos, about the people, about the. Don't use that against me, man. They're gonna hate me after this. <laughs> Big companies are doing their job. They want regulation, they love that. That's the way they can cut out competition. I have to be very careful and politically correct, but you know, certain companies benefit. When people say tobacco, tobacco is not true. It's like saying a chimpanzee is the same as a dolphin. They're both mammals. I've never seen a kid get started on cigars. Young people are not smoking premium handmade cigars. They're smoking 99 cent. Blocks, baby. You could argue this is a national security issue because when economies collapse, which usually fills that void, is not anything that'll be good for America. It's fucking scary. What's going on, gentlemen? How are you? It's yeah. great, man. That trailer gave me chills. That's so good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's up, guys? Never mind. How are the both of you guys doing today? Good. Good. Glad it's Saturday, but busy as shit, but it's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is where so we set the line down. Yeah, exactly. Got your drinks. Are you guys smoking today or are we just drinking? 
Well, <laughs> smoking a little, little bit later on, not right now. Yeah, it's California. We can't uh, smoke in these <laughs> office buildings, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. So, gentlemen, we just got done watching the trailer for Hand Rolled. Um, I think one of the the first questions that comes to mind. I mean, this was a fantastic documentary that you guys both put together. Very well written, very well shot. Um, awesome. Brother Stogie and I both loved it. Yes. Uh, we were both wondering, you know, where where did your cigar journeys start? How would you guys get started in cigars? Was there a passion for cigars before shooting this documentary? Yeah, I mean, we uh, we both were just you know, kind of occasional smokers. Um, we liked it a lot, but, you know, we weren't really super deep in the, you know, into it. Uh, I mean, we, we had a few, like, you know, rare things here and there and, you know, collected a couple of boxes here and there that were a little more special. But I would say, you know, we were pretty avid, yeah. more or less, you know. And um, we were, we're documentary filmmakers, so... I mean, excuse me, we're commercial filmmakers. And um, we were just like, hey, what's something we could do like as a, what's something we could do as like a long-term project that's a passion project that gets us to actually tell a story that's ours rather than some clients. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we were just both like, we like cigars, you know? <laughs> There's nothing out there on it. And at least not anything recent. So we just kind of decided, like, hey, let's let's give this a shot. We didn't know anybody in the industry. No. Um, like, the, the only person we knew in the industry was our local tobacconist down the road here. Um, and that was it. So we just, uh, yeah. I mean, I think I started smoking when I was 18 or 19. About the same, yeah. Yeah. But, again, just not super, uh, you know. Yes, we get it. Get Sorry. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Let me take another step. I'll come back. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got not it. super often. There it is. Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ. Uh, let's start the video. Uh, yeah, can, we, can we go over? <laughs> you, 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 you live, Steve. You live, man. Come Everything off the you wind, man. Let's fucking see. Sure. There's no editing being done today. I'll be better. I'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> so we got we got two guys that were watching. Everybody knows who we are. You know, everybody knows how we met. You know, so have you guys had a long history together? Did y'all just meet? You know what I'm saying? Before the documentary, music. hey, you do film? Yeah, I do film. We'll, we'll do a film. You know what I'm saying? So what, what's the history behind? Well, we were married back in 2007. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, we've we've known each other since we were kids. Yeah. Um, I was telling you guys before, we're both we both grew up in Romanian families, and our parents are Romanian, so in that Romanian community, we kind of just knew each other. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it's been God 25 years that we've known each other, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, <clears throat> we were super close. Through our late teens and started, we tried to start our own business, our first business together when we were eighteen Oof. or seventeen. Oof. Failed after like three weeks. Massive failure. Uh, <laughs> and then we got into film about the same time, what, eleven years ago. Yeah, something like 2010. that. Two thousand ten. Two thousand ten. Yeah, so eleven years ago, and and that kind of progressed. We started working together. Uh, opened a We had our own companies, and we started our first company together. And that was it. We've been we've been working together for about in film for about 11 years. Yeah. Oh, so we got a lot of, a lot of bromance on there. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Don't be shy, bro. Don't be yeah. shy, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is. <laughs> so what are some of the other projects you guys have worked on together outside of Handrolled? I mean, we do a lot of, like I said, earlier commercial stuff, you know, just yeah, little bits and pieces here and there. But um, I mean, we've done, we've done everything like from, from weddings to commercials to corporate events. I mean, all sorts of junk. There's like uh, every kind of, everybody kind of gets into film and we did too. Cause we thought like, Hey, we can tell our, we can tell some fun stories and do some like artistic stuff. And then you just kind of get stuck somewhere along the way doing whatever pays the bills, hmm. you know? And so, like this was our first like foray into what we really wanted to do when we started this whole thing, you know. Notice how he remembered foray, but he didn't remember often. Often, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the Romanian, you know, brain. You know? Yeah. What it is? Which one? <laughs> so 
Let's see. So speaking of Romania, because we, we have viewers from all over the country now. We do. You know, so just in case we have some Romanians watching that because Jesse and Steve are here. That's right. Is there a is there a cigar community yeah. in Romania? Oh yeah. Yeah. We in Nicaragua actually we met uh at uh Puro Sabor, the festival out there. Yeah. We met uh, two of the main distributors, I think, right for for well, Romania. The, the one main distributor that, yeah, they work together. But yeah, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's the main dude that distributes for all Romania. And all of uh, all of the non-Cuban brands he distributes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, okay. so, but yeah, there's a community. And this was a few years ago. We we saw them a couple of times over the years, but uh, from what I understand, it's growing more and more. It's a big cigarette smoking country for sure. Like oh, yeah. like most of Europe. Oh, okay. So when you guys started looking at doing this project for hand rolled, you know, what, what were some of the things you guys were initially looking at? Like what was some of the messages you were trying to get across in this documentary? Mm. Well, when we first came up with the idea to do the documentary, we, we decided to do a year of pre-production um, and kind of dive into it. So within two weeks, we met with our local tobacconist, and he's the one that told us about the FDA and what was going on, uh, what was supposed to come in August of that year, of 2016. 16, yeah. yeah. So our very first trailer that we put together uh, was very FDA heavy. It was all about the FDA. Mm -hmm. um, and so until we started to kind of get to know what was going on, we went to, um, uh, not PCA, what was it called at the time? Uh, yeah. Anyway, the, the cigar the trade show, trade yeah. Show. IPCPR. Uh, IPCPR. Boom. There you go. Nailed it. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> we went to that that year and like just kind of try to meet everybody in the industry and see who we can get to do an interview with us. Um, and so that's where we really learned like, hey, the FDA story is kind of fleeting. That's what's happening now, but it's not the main story. Uh, yeah. So we just kind of like as we started to uh, do interviews and stuff, that's kind of how we started to figure out the way we wanted to tell the story. So when you watch the movie, it, it takes it by decades. And so that's kind of how we, we learned throughout the process of filming it, that that's the best approach we need to take. Yeah, yeah, you guys, I think that on that, on that point, um, we were kind of figuring out the story as we were shooting it. Like with yeah. every additional interview that we shot, we're like, oh, okay, this is like putting another little piece of the puzzle together. I didn't, you know, I didn't know these two people were connected or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that, um, I mean, when I, when I said earlier, like we, we didn't know anybody in the industry, we didn't even know what interviews we would get, you know, when we started on this thing. So, um, you know, we were like, we were like happy to have just a few people initially like agree to interviews. Um, when we went to Nicaragua the first time, we didn't have anybody, the closest we had to like a secured interview when we went to Nicaragua the first time was uh, Nick Perdomo mm -hmm. said we could come see his factory, but he didn't mm -hmm. agree like sit down for an interview. He didn't agree for any of that stuff. So uh, like that was the closest thing we had secured. We just, you know, we're knocking on doors and just hoping people would just, you know, let us and it ended up working out, but we didn't know. So yeah. it's not like we had this like grand uh, narrative sort of planned out because it was, we had some ideas, but otherwise it was kind of like, uh, you know, once we got all the interviews, then we were like, okay, what's the, what's the overarching story here? Right. Did you guys find that when you were putting this thing together that any of the manufacturers or anybody was reluctant to participate in the documentary initially? We may have lost them. Yeah, that was that's frozen, but they were thinking. Sure. Ah, hey. There you go. You guys back? We can hear you. It, it, okay. hey. Yeah, there we go. All right, we're back. <laughs> hey, well, that's all part of shooting live. <laughs> hey, Showbiz, baby. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what was the question again? Sorry. Yeah, so I was asking. So when you guys were initially putting uh, everything together for the documentary, did you find that any of the manufacturers or anybody in the industry? was reluctant to be a part of the documentary or reluctant to speak to you guys when you were putting this together? Yeah, let's just, uh, we'll kind of very gently say anybody related to Swisher in any way. We're a bit reluctant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just leave it at that, more or less. <laughs> okay. Well, 
Actually, we posted about it too. So uh, Marvin Schenken was a great one example. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we, he we, was reluctant. We finally get the interview with this dude. We sit down, set up everything in the in his offices in uh in his conference room in in New York, waiting for him to come in. He walks into the room, doesn't even say hi. The first thing he says was, uh, "You guys win the award for being the biggest pains of my ass." <laughs> yeah, like, oh really? <laughs> yeah, he said, "I canceled on you fuckers three times, or I told you fuckers no three times, and here you are." <laughs> <laughs> and I, was just on I mean, so I mean that's we we tell people that all the time, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially people who want to, you know, start their own channels, yeah, and stuff like that. You run into roadblocks, and they just told the most terrifying story <laughs> I probably ever heard of someone saying, Hey, I denied you motherfuckers three times. Stop yeah. asking me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they stay yeah. with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey man. Persistence. I mean, hey, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how he said he told us. Let's, let's just say David Savona, great guy. Yeah, and Andy right. Nagy. And Andy Nagy. Yeah, they, I mean, they foresaw it, you know. And and by that point, we were almost three years in to filming, so you, you kind of start hearing from people, like well, the interviews that we got and and stuff like that. And we even so, like uh, old man Padron, uh, Jose Orlando, this is his last on camera interview. The guy passed a few months after we shot the interview. Oh, okay. so you know they start hearing stuff like that, and they kind of they put in a word for us. I haven't heard from them since, but you know they were cool then. <laughs> right, we got what we needed. <laughs> we heard from them. Come on, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> George calls back. How <laughs> cute they are! Yeah, bro. <laughs> no, I'm talking about uh, cigar fishing. I'm talking about oh, cigar fishing. Yeah, sorry. no, George, George is George. the best. No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no is. Right, Before we get. Before we get any deeper into this interview, you know what I'm saying? We, we always like to tell our viewers what we're smoking on and what we're drinking on. That's true. So, of course, I have my pipe. You know, some of my nice decadent pipe tobacco in there. there you go. Smells of oh, nice oh. rice seasoned with nice, it does smell you know, good. real mace seasoned in it. That's really what good. it smells like, you know? That's very good. A little bit of 17, <laughs> 1738 cognac. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? What you got over there? Well, nothing quite as fancy oh, yeah. as 1738, just 805. Okay. And uh, I'm actually uh, smoking a punch. This is the Kung Pao. I actually talked about this on a previous episode. Uh, I liked it so much, I actually went and bought a box of these. These were really good. So what nice. are you guys drinking tonight? I'm drinking a little Blanton's right now. It's a uh, oh. Ella Dining Room Select Barrel. Yeah. Ah, yes. Yes. Shallow and pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we're not currently smoking just yet. Yeah, so you guys said you were heading out to an event later on tonight. Where you guys going to be? Yeah, smoking? we got uh, we're hosting uh, the cigar part of this bourbon and and uh, cigar pairing event. So we're bringing out some Nicaraguans, uh, uh, Charter Oak, yep, Don Pepin right. Blues, mm -hmm. and some Davidoff uh, Nicaraguan. Ooh, the fancy, like, fancy stuff. Yeah, yeah, pretty decent. Put up or shut up. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I heard that. So let's see. <laughs> So you guys travel, you guys have been to Nicaragua, you guys have been to Cuba, correct? Yeah. Right. Yes, so and you guys have you guys seen you guys seen the actual tobacco fields and the barns where all this stuff is laid out like we see on TV, correct? More yeah. than I care to admit. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Well, since, since you said that, Steve, this question is for you. Okay. Oh, so, no. what, <laughs> so what has been your experience? Because for for those of us who have been stuck in California, yeah. we haven't seen that beauty. You know what I'm saying? So what was that beauty like for you yeah. up close? It was pretty awesome, actually. It's uh, you know, when you just kind of see it in pictures, you don't get the relative size of things, you know. Um like when you see uh broadleaf, you know. It's thing is massive. Like you, you see it in pictures, and maybe you, you can see something for scale. But like, you know, as opposed to you know any of the Cuban seed varietals or something like that. Like it, it's just it's pretty awesome to just see you know all the textures and everything, and uh, like just the different methods that everybody has, like a slightly different play on all that stuff. And um, you know, we were actually just out in Florida. Mm -hmm. what was it um, uh, December? Mid December, I think. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went out to, there's a small farm in Florida run by uh, Jeff Borshowitz of Corona Cigar. And he's got like, I don't know, three acres, three to five acres planted. Of then um, that's like all the Florida sun grown that's like available anywhere um, for all the different blends that he does with those. And it's, it's pretty cool just to see like, uh, 
you know, he had he had over there, I, I want to say they were like Swiss made. Remember those machines that they were using to like hang uh, yeah. to hang the uh, the leaves in the carrying barns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost like sewed through the leaves and somebody just kind of like put them on a conveyor belt. Um, so everybody's got like, those things are like a hundred years old. I don't even know where he yeah. like gets the parts for them anymore or whatever, but like just seeing a lot of this stuff, um, you know, we were visiting the, the Newmans um, and like they have these old machines and like, you know, they're still using the original binders from like 1934 to like, you know, like, like maintain them. And I'm like, dude, you guys got to preserve that shit. Put it all on an iPad or something. You know? <laughs> right. like just seeing all that stuff up close and personal, it's it's pretty awesome. I would say, like, if anybody gets a chance, it's it's worth doing. Um, it's definitely worth going out and checking it out and just seeing how many people like it takes to, you know, just construct one cigar. You know, like your your mind will be blown when you realize, you know, this isn't like a mechanized, a highly mechanized thing. You know, it's pretty. It's pretty just hands on the whole way through, mm -hmm. right? I, I mean, just like the the documentary implies, hand rolled. But right, I think a right. lot of people, you know, when thinking about cigars and stuff, you know, and you, you know, every, I think for most part, it's probably pretty common knowledge that cigars, premium cigars, are all hand rolled. But uh, just like you said, you know, taking into consideration, especially when it comes to some of the potential or pending. Uh, regulation from the FDA and just how much that can impact economies and countries and things like that. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, that's true. That's why we so, love that line with uh, Claudio, uh, Claudio from Mombacho in our trailer at the end where he says it's fucking scary. Like mm -hmm. the set, that was our very first interview period. Yeah. We, we were supposed to film with uh, Perdomo, but we shot, we met them and we were able to shoot an interview with these guys and at the second he said that line early on at the very beginning, we're like, that's going to be like the biggest catalyst to the film. Like it's, it's such yeah. a great fucking line. Cause Absolutely. it's so good. So you guys both were in Cuba, obviously shooting part of this movie. Were there any challenges or any obstacles you both found when trying to shoot in Cuba? Uh, well, we went <laughs> in. <on> a... <laughs> that's a loaded question, right? <laughs> We went in uh, through Mexico, first of all, uh, with visitor visas or tourist visas. Sorry. Uh, no, we didn't. We were completely on the ball. <laughs> the fucking world. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, we so we had like 14 bags of gear that we traveled with. This and, was coming off of a trip that we, yeah. we had just gone to the Dominican. We had just gone in the same trip. We went Dominican, Florida, DC, DC and then Mexico down to yeah. you know Mexico to Cuba. So when we filmed, we traveled with about fourteen bags of gear. Like there's there's a lot of stuff that we take with us to to make this happen. And uh, in Mexico, we rented a hotel room because it was cheaper than getting a locker to store our gear and more secure, I would imagine. And, and, yeah, probably. So we left almost all of our gear. We each took a backpack with a small camera. Actually, this is one of the cameras we took with us. So literally each one of us had one of these cameras. We took one light. As opposed to like our massive, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like cinema cameras. Right. Uh, just one backpack each and that's it. Man. And, and so we try to fly under the radar as much as we could. And that was the biggest challenge is not being, not having the security blanket of, a, of our, the camera we shot on mostly shoots an 8K. So to give you a red. Yeah, one of the reds. So uh, that was like our security blanket. And so it's just traveling with these smaller cameras and let's hope we get the shot that we need, you know? Right. Uh, everything else was pretty much the guy that uh, we connected with randomly through uh, Joel from uh, Life of Lux. And shout out on Instagram. Out, yeah. At Life of Lux. Good, good dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hooked it up with this guy that, that kind of took us around. And it's because of him we interviewed the Robinas and a couple other people that just didn't make the final cut of the movie. But we were supposed to have dinner one night with uh, one of Castro's sons. It ended up getting canceled, but it's all because of Joel. Like, he hooked it all up. Yeah. Hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So we have we have a, a lot of a lot of newbies that come to Cigar Titans looking for information, looking for like how to get into stogies, about the business, about the society in general. So what what did you guys want the beginner smoker? who watched hand roll to take away from. Ooh. Yeah, I think I think uh, the beginner gets a pretty good dose of everything in hand roll, you know, like you get some idea of the history. So 
like Jesse said earlier, we split it up by decades. And the reason for that was like this whole thing, the whole economy of cigars as we have it today um, is the way it is because of the embargo. And there's just no way around that, you know, like I don't, who knows what would have happened had the embargo not happened. Like maybe some of the, um, you know, like Cuban growing stuff would have spilled naturally into the Dominican and Nicaragua over the decades. Who knows? Like you can't, we, we can't know, but because of the embargo, it had to spill, you know, and, and people were disenfranchised and removed from their homes and their businesses were taken and all their livelihood was taken. And so they had, they just had to find somewhere new to go. So that's kind of a, I think like a lot of people when they just first hear about cigars and don't know much about it, they just think, oh, that's a Cuban thing, right? And so we kind of wanted to spell out like, yeah, it's it's a Cuban thing kind of, but like it also is not just a Cuban thing and here's why. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, but like, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't want to focus on any of like the like flavor profiles and blends and stuff like that, because honestly that stuff, there are people that do a way better job at that than we could ever do. Um, right. Uh, with better palettes than we have and all that kind of thing. But we're just interested in in sort of the stories and understanding like why the industry is where it's at today. And so exactly. that's, uh, that's kind of what we wanted to uh, inform people on. And then the other main thing that we set out um, to accomplish, which like from a propaganda standpoint, if you will, um, we just, we, we said to ourselves, like if we put out this movie and nobody associates a cigarette with a cigar again, who sees it, then we've done our job. And that's, that was like the other big thing that we wanted to accomplish for, for new cigar smokers or new, or people just kind of looking at it from the outside. Right. Yeah. One of the biggest compliments we got when we, we did a year of just traveling and showing the movie around at different shops and theaters and stuff, the biggest compliments we've gotten from these, from showing it is like wives of guys that have been smoking cigars forever that are like, Oh, I get it. I get why he loves cigars so much. And then they'll even say stuff like, I want to try a cigar now because I saw the movie. And like, that's all we can freaking hope for. Man. That's like the best compliment you could possibly get. Right. Well, and going back to what you were saying, Steve, I mean, I think with the embargo, I mean, you can look at it a couple of different ways. It could be looked at as a blessing and a curse because, totally. because pushing, you know, with what Castro was doing uh, during that time of pushing a lot of these manufacturers or forcing a lot of these manufacturers out of Cuba, you know, this did propel all of these other manufacturers to find, you know, like in Nicaragua, Esteli, things like that. And we're getting all of these new different blends that we may or may not have ever gotten had that Cuban embargo never taken place. Yeah. Yeah, and it, like yeah, it's hard to know who the hell knows. Maybe, maybe they would have just ventured out on their own. You know, Cuba's a small country. Maybe sure. they, you know, they would have realized like, hey, we, you know, Nicaragua's got all this space. We can take our seat out there. Like it could be, but either way, um, maybe maybe it just maybe it just like sped up that process. You know, which is either way, it's you know, it's important to know why it is. You know, and like why it is where it's at right now, and why these key players are who they are. You know. Right. Y'all see Raul right. step down? What's that? Raul Castro, step, Castro stepped down yesterday. Did he yesterday? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Did not hear that. He officially stepped down. He said a few years ago he's going to step down in 2021, and yesterday he stepped down. He actually Ooh. did it, huh? Yeah. No more Castros. Wow. So we'll see what happens next. Fidel's back, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> so we can have Bernie's <laughs> situation. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, German, where do you think the cigar industry is heading now? Straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Be honest. Be honest. <laughs> well, hey, honestly, 2020 proved that the cigar industry is just as strong as it was yeah. in the last two decades. You know what I mean? Like, uh, coronavirus brought out the a new cigar boom, but... I mean, that's the best thing that could have happened to oh, – oh, that's the worst thing I've said in a while. That was a really good – hold on. <laughs> now I'm are, you say, are you thanking God for the coronavirus? Right no. Now? Is that what's happening? Let me just – two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, the cigar industry had the, this amazing boom in 2020. And you're from everybody that we talked to, like the best problem to have is like, dude, I had to bring all my employees back. I had to hire more people or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. 
So I think the industry is here to stay, man. I don't see I don't see any issues that would take it down. The FDA is kind of a, a looming presence, but so far in the last five years that we've been in, involved with the film and stuff like that, man, they've been knocking it out of the park with uh, getting stuff kind of struck and and or getting workarounds or whatever. And it seems like the FDA has bigger fish to fry these days. So yeah, right. yeah. But, um, I mean, I mean, we, we we think that they would, you know, but they seem to be focusing on, especially when it comes to you know cigars, premium. Yeah, cigars. you know, we want to get we want to get you guys, you know, take on this because you know our community and ourselves, we all we come to the conclusion that there's nothing about the cigar community that targets children. You know, they. Uh, number, number one, they can't get into any of our facilities because they're 21 and over. And half the damn, you know, places that we go to out here in Southern California are membership only, which has to be 21 and over. Right. You yeah. know, so, I mean, what do you think they're targeting? Or, I mean, as far as kids having access to cigars, is the premium industry is, is not it. I mean, so what do you guys take on the FDA and their, you know, persistence on trying to say that, you know, Premium cigars is also, you know, in the face equivalent, of yeah, equivalent to that of the ninety-nine cent blunts and the and the I cigarettes. Think it's easier to lump it all together. It's easier to put it all in the same category as cigarettes, as whatever. That's why in the film we show that that uh, Swisher commercial, or not Swisher, sorry, uh, the Tobacco Free California commercial, where they, <laughs> right. they show all the different flavors. <laughs> Strike that out from the. Uh... <laughs> On that note, and yeah. this is more of a personal opinion, but um, take it as take it as you wish. But um, I think there's two different actors in that camp. I think there's the I think there's the people that just they kind of like Jesse said, like it's easier to just lump it all together, and they don't know the difference, and they don't they're not aware that like these two products are different. They just see a cigar and, you know, uh, Backwoods is, or Black and Mild is the same as like a, you know, premium hand roll. They just don't care to know the difference. It's not their thing, you know? And that's, I would say like, that's uh, like, that's the ignorant crowd that is just like, you know, it's banal. It's just, you know, like they're just ignorant, not because they want to be ignorant, but just because it's not their thing. And then you have like the people that know the difference and know the distinction but just have like an agenda to like an anti-tobacco agenda and they have all this funding that comes in every year and they, you know, it's like, <clears throat> it's like the, the problem you see in any sort of bureaucracy. If you, if the problem is being solved, then the funding dries up. And so you constantly have to build an enemy and you constantly have to, you know, in order to like keep getting the funding and not have your department shut down, you know, you a hero without a villain. Right. Yeah. 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 So I think there's there's two people and and you know I would say the second person is a bit more nefarious and they prey on the ignorance of the first uh, people you know and it doesn't matter what we say we're we're those like evil tobacco pushers you know so right. to speak and so that's kind of why like in the film we just we wanted to tell the human story because that's the hardest thing for them to combat is the human story of like hey this was like my family business this is providing so many jobs that pe to people that need them. Um, this is not something that, you know, this is a, a very different product. And uh, we thought that's kind of like the only way to get to the hearts and minds um, of people that, uh, that that may be in the first camp where they're just ignorant. I don't think you could really break through the second uh, category of people, but I think we have a lot of opportunity for the first. Right. right. Well, that actually kind of segues into a question we have here from Adam. And Adam asks, did you guys notice that when you were traveling, people in other places had the same misconception of missing or mixing up uh, cigars and cigarettes? Uh, traveling to like different countries or traveling? Yeah. I think it's probably uh, different countries because I think it's pretty common knowledge out here. People have this misconception that all tobacco is the same. And, and cigars are the same as cigarettes. And the, yes, know. exactly. I, I didn't notice that so much in other countries. I, I did notice the East Coast are more heavy uh, cigarette smokers than the West Coast. We're kind of out in the open and stuff. Um, so I, don't, I, I mean, as far as like in other countries, though, like it just wasn't even a topic of discussion, really. Like it just seemed like nobody really cared. You know, just yeah. kind of do your own thing. And, you either smoke or you don't. Yeah. And they right. didn't. It seemed like even even in like 
Nicaragua and the Dominican, most people that smoke smoke cigarettes. I, I, we've met a lot of manufacturers uh, that will smoke cigarettes in between cigars, like in okay. other countries. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think people just don't care. Like, yeah, it's just, just kind of like you. whatever. They don't have such a like a propaganda machine against it, so they yeah. just don't really care that much. Oh, okay. I mean, so let's see. So we, we see a lot of like uh, like Cuban cigar talk going around, communities and blogs and you know all over social media trying trying to figure out and target who has the fake Cubans. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So do you do you think the relationship with Cuba has kind of stigmatized the in a negative way the cigar industry? Ooh. The cigar industry, no, but I think it's put Cuban cigars on such a high pedestal that they can't keep up with it. Like, there's no quality control. There's no, there's, well, there's very little quality control. And the processes are cheated a little bit from what we've seen. And you get a lot of fakes. And so at what cost? Like, I one of my favorite things to do, which is one of my worst qualities, is when we're hanging out with uh, some of our friends that are maybe a little more affluent and they want to show us their new Cubans they just got. Like, yeah. yeah. Car of the he they just got. loves to be an asshole. Bruh, in three <laughs> seconds. In two seconds, that shit's fake. <laughs> I'm just going to smile like, oh, that's cool, man. That's nice. Hey, yeah, that's know your great. audience. We, we shot a documentary about yeah. cigars. Right? A jar of mojitos for real? They never made that, but you got one. Damn, oh my! Good for you, dude. Well, I think they made the jar, but they never had the mojitos in it. Yeah, it's, a it's fake. Thing. Yeah, it's fake. Do you so, think that desire for those Cuban those Cuban cigars is driven by the fact that people always want what? isn't always readily available to them because of, of the embargo. And it's just a that. flex, man. It's like anything else. Yeah. It's a flex, um, which is fine. Who cares? You know, uh, you know, it's a nice car. It's a Rolex. It's, you know, like it, it sets you apart. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, from, from everybody else. Um, doesn't matter if the, you know, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, if you own a Ferrari that breaks down every, you know, every other day, it doesn't matter that it breaks down. It's in the shop every other day. You have a Ferrari and you get to pay that. Ferrari, right? <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter that your Cuban is still green and you have to wait three years before you can actually smoke it. Right. Uh, if you happen to get a real one, um, you know, you have a Cuban. And that's like all people care about is just, you know, saying that kind of thing. And in a lot of cases, although that said, big caveat, we do know a lot of people that like love rare Cuban cigars and love finding the rare shit and sure. whatever. You know, they're not just, you know, the name brand whores, you know, like, like we thought, we thought yeah. about Joel, like Joel is like, he legit uh, scouts these things and, you know, our buddy Pierre and like, there's a lot of people that do, I'm, I'm talking about in the general case, not, you know, like the specific aficionados that we know that, you know. Well, Joel had a great line in the movie where he said his, his favorite cigar and his least favorite cigar are both Cubans. Yeah. So it's just like, that, I mean, that's the best way to summarize it, man. Like, Smoke what you like at the end of the day. Who gives a yeah. shit about where you got it from? Like, if you like it, you like it. We've smoked some crazy shit from every country, but I know my palate and I know Cubans ain't it for me. Right. And I don't want to fucking go through all the garbage of figuring out what's legit, what's not, where'd you get it from, and all this stuff. Right. Compare labels and do my homework. Like, I just want to smoke. I don't, I'm not taking a <laughs> test to smoke a cigar. <laughs> Okay, so, so so boom, a, a, a segue <laughs> using that word a lot this episode, you know, <laughs> you like big into, words, you know, segue into this. So, I mean, so what what cigar does Jesse and Steve? What are your go tos? What, what, oh boy, uh, I will say I do like Nicaraguan tobacco more than anything else, and we do a lot of. Uh, well, I'll speak for myself. I'll let you answer on your end. I love anything that comes out of like my father. Mm -hmm. Including Tatuaje, Padron, Foundations, a, a great line that we love. Uh, I love very much. Yeah. So I, I'm just more partial to Nicaraguan tobacco. That's definitely where my palate goes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, it just kind of depends on the mood and whatever. Like to me, it's more about like set and setting and who I'm with and what we're doing. And, you know, like there are times where, I want to smoke something I really like, but I also just like to try new shit yeah. um, as often as I possibly can. Right. And so I, I, I like Dominican tobacco. I love Honduran tobacco. Um, you know, there's, 
it's just kind of like what you're in the mood for, you know, like yeah. we both drink coffee a lot, you know, like every once in a while you just want like, you know, a black coffee, nothing added, no milk, no, you know, cream, no nothing, just, you know, to try something out. And so, I don't know, cigars are such an awesome thing that it's, it can be an experience rather than, you know, just, just, you know, consuming the same thing over and over. Yeah. Um, and there, there are like I love Nicaraguan tobaccos, but there are some days where I don't feel like smoking something that heavy, you know, like, exactly. um, and I just want to chill with something a little lighter. Um, and so I don't know, it, it really, it's all over the place. Uh, I would say that like most consistently, though, to answer your question, um, like I'll smoke a Don Pepe in Blue, you yeah. know, okay, it's pretty even keeled, I would say. Mm -hmm. And so, we got an, another question here from Brandon. Brandon says, what countries are worth their hype? Or do you guys even think there are countries solely based off of USA baby. <laughs> <laughs> that are worth the hype? Or do you really feel that it comes down to the manufacturers themselves? It totally comes down to the manufacturers. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're all great. I mean, there's so much stuff everywhere uh, that's really good. I mean, I think we're living in like the best time to smoke cigars right now. Oh, for sure, hundred right. percent. You, know, you get in terms of like in terms of like um, percentage wise, you know, I would say like the vast majority of stuff up coming out of every country right now is at least pretty good. Um, you you have a lot less stuff that's really shitty these days. I feel like um, as compared to like when we first started yeah. smoking. Uh, well, even in the documentary, you guys talked about the boom in the '90s and all of the, yeah, like, for lack of a better term, crap tobacco and crap cigars that were coming out <laughs> in right. the '90s, and all these companies that were just I going mean, out. To of be business. fair, that's all stuff we heard of because I was ten in the '90s. You know, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're just going off secondhand information here. But. <laughs> they put a little disclaimer there at the bottom yeah. of the screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, from what we hear, it was pretty shitty. Right, um, but it's supply and demand. Like, what are you gonna do? You gotta, you gotta yeah. conform, right? So, I mean, so as Steve said, so we always try to, you know, portray to our newcomers that watch our channel because we get quite a few of them. That trying different cigars is a whole part of the journey in smoking cigars. And sometimes, like Steve said, you know, I'm, I might not want to smoke some all big and bold. I might want to chill yeah. and smoke some as simple as a, you know, a leather rolls from you know Deadwood sure. Tobacco Company. Yeah. So, so to get into you know a more personal cigar feel, how 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 do you think how important do you think it is to try different blends, try different wrappers? Yeah, because you always hear about you know there's always that guy when you go into the cigar lounge that is a diehard. I, I don't I always smoke Maduro, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I only smoke it from this particular manufacturer. You know, I, my brother's actually one of those people. So if you're watching, you know, he's one of those guys that's like I. I, I like this particular brand of cigars and I don't branch out a lot on that. What, what are some of the, what's some of the advice you could give some of those folks out there that are maybe a little reluctant to try different blends and try different uh, cigars from different manufacturers? I mean, it's, it's with anything in life. Like I love sushi, but that, does that mean I'm only going to eat sushi 24 seven? Like I'm gonna branch out and try different things. I'm gonna try Moroccan food. I'm gonna try whatever. So you've never had Moroccan food, thing. Yeah, but it's <laughs> <all gross. laughs> <laughs> big old butt. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it's uh, just like under Europe. Yeah, listen, here's the point. <laughs> we, we, we understood where you were going, brother. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's fine. Being diehards of whatever it is you like, you know what I mean. And and, and Robbie Levin had a great point in the thing in the movie. In the thing, and that thing about what thing we did. Thing we did. <laughs> Steve threw him off. Threw him off his game. Man. Was that one thing that cost us both of our marriages? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he said, like, what came with the boom is people went from being diehard, uh, brand loyal people yeah, yeah, yeah. to like, okay, let me try some of this. Let me try some of this. You know, whatever. So what I did at the beginning, uh, and I, I advise this to other people, is get on a monthly subscription with something. Like yeah. uh, I love my cigar packs right now. They're do, they're killing the game with the monthly subscription. You know, yeah. it's promo code. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, no, there's no promo code, but uh, I mean, they're not, they don't sponsor us or anything, but it's like, dude, pay. No, that's a good idea. Yeah. 
35 bucks a month, you get like uh, four or five cigars from, you know, these, these different subscriptions. My cigar pack is, is one I'm currently subscribed to, even though I know what I like. Uh, but you get to try different things and you get to see like, okay, that Connecticut is shit to me. Like I, I don't want to ever smoke Connecticut's again or whatever, or try different blends, like different types of Connecticut's or different types of whatever, like get into it and, and try different things is what I'd always say. Like I, I know what I love and I know what I smoke any day of the week in any cigar lounge I ever walk into. But if someone's like, Hey man, you got to try this. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's try it out. Let's see what's new. I yeah, agree. Because we're because we're, we're part of luxurycigarclub.com. And you, you, you talk about different blends. They, yeah. they you know the cards that we read off when we do our you know our unboxings, they'll have, you know, this blend is from Honduras, San Andreas. Actually, that, that, and there's one question we ain't guys. gonna tell you about. Yeah, you know and, that, and, and you we, nailed it. We, we got location we ain't gonna tell you about. So what <laughs> I, I've got a I've got a serious question. This is not a pre-planned question. This is a question every time I read. One of these cards, and it says, you know, undisclosed. region undisclosed. Is there a is there a reason manufacturers do that in terms of not wanting to disclose where a part of their cigar comes from? Is that a part of just the blending process or something like that? What, what's the big secret there with undisclosed? I uh, I don't actually know. I I, I mean, what's I, I not on this answer. It's driving you want up. guesses. <laughs> what's that? Do you want guesses or do you want like certainty? I mean, I mean, I mean, because I was, I, I was assuming if premium cigar tobacco came from like the north side of Nicaragua, right. it was like, you know what? This I found some really good stuff from the south side, right? But we don't want people to know <laughs> that we got tobacco from the south side. You know what I'm saying? They put a <laughs> part of the nose. I think that's south. Got the south side tobacco. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So, my opinion. <laughs> Is that it's a good way of being pretentious and saying undisclosed. Oh, <laughs> I think that, I mean, that's all I can say about it. I don't know. I think it just it. adds a layer of mystery to the cigar. To that, that were honestly, you know, a, a lot of manufacturers, they don't have their own facilities, you know, like they don't grow their own tobacco. Um, they're mm -hmm. buying from, from different buyers here and there. Yeah. And so my guess is in some of them, like, you know, like maybe the Lijero in the cigar is really important because that's where the majority of the flavor is coming from, you know, but right. you got, you know, you've got some sick or some Viso in there. That's like not super important to the flavor profile. And maybe you're kind of getting it from two different suppliers. So, and, and maybe you've smoked, you know, your blender has smoked both and they're very similar in flavor profile, like in undistinguishable to the blend. Yeah. And maybe that's, that's a guess, but just kind of knowing, kind of knowing the supply chain of how a lot of things are made, that's like my best guess. But also could be, like you said, to add some layer of mystery. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Right. On a quest to get the answer to this question, because it drives me nuts every time I see it. I just don't get it. Like, or is that's, it, just, that's a good bet. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 put, you put it like this, you know what I'm saying? You went to Ranch Cucamonga, went in the IE, <laughs> and we say, hey, we want a taco. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You don't have <laughs> the best tacos in the IE. But if you go to downtown LA, right, right. Rice tea, you got some nice things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know? He knows I know food, bro. Yeah, he has the big one. He knows I'm down to earth with tacos. He has to eat like a hero. He has to do that's eaten some shit before. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man! I would drive my down, ass down to the Inland Empire, and we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta do the show. Yeah, oh, that's funny. I probably should pour you more to drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, gentlemen, do you think that being uh, being involved with this documentary, making this documentary, this is uh, this has brought you in more to the cigar community. You find that you're more involved now mm. with the cigar community than you were prior to making the documentary. I, I mean, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were, like I said, we had like our local like lounge that we went to, and that was pretty much, you know, the extent of it. Um, but I don't know. I, I feel like we're still. Pretty down to earth fellas. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we've made 
we become really close to a lot of people in the cigar industry, just like in anything in life. Like you spend a lot of time with people, you film with people at two in the morning over drinks. Like you, you, you become friends with people. So it's like, yeah, I mean, we call Pete Johnson dad, for example, from Tatuai, because he believed in more in us than our own fathers. Okay. So, no, right. no, right. no, fuck <laughs> you. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, dude, I mean, you spend time with people, it's you get to know the real people, and it's a good time. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so let's see. So a, a major, let's see, a point that kind of caught my eye in the documentary is kind of a point that we've seen everywhere of the cigar community. Everyone talking about the atmosphere that cigars bring, how, how yeah. that community brings your CEO or the owner people of people together, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, you rock, you know, Dwayne the Rock Johnson ain't hit me up yet. So <laughs> you know, I don't coming. know, I don't know if you really smoke cigars because I figured he, you know, we, we would be able to chat it up if cigars brought people together. But what do you guys enjoy or what do you guys look for when you guys look to go out in in the community and smoke cigars with other people what what atmosphere do you guys look for i'll tell you what the the best networking we've ever done in anything in life for business or whatever has been over a, a glass of something and a cigar in our hands so yeah, brown I, juice and a cigar you know yeah i mean you you got Any someone's variety. undivided attention for an hour plus over cigar, like you're, you're controlling your breathing because you don't want to inhale. So your heart rate's going down and you're just bullshitting. Man, that's that's the best time ever. So whether you're celebrating something or it's just a Tuesday and you're having a cigar in a lounge, you have the best conversations over over a cigar, in my opinion. Right. And, yeah. and here's some crazy shit. <laughs> right. Brandon asks, question for all of you, uh, best cigar memory. We'll start with you guys. I'm going to say Jose Orlando Padron. Uh, we shot George's interview one day, uh, and we shot it in their factory in, in Miami. But he had to unplug the phones because they kept going off, and he turned his cell phone off. So we shot the interview, which is like an hour and a half long, and then we sat around for a couple hours just smoking and drinking scotch. The next day, uh, we found out that his dad was trying to get a hold of him, and said, hey, these three white dudes that were walking around the factory kidnapped my son the night before because he couldn't get a hold of them. <laughs> His phone was off. The office phones were off. He's like, that's it. It's done. He so, thought we were terrorists. Exactly. <laughs> so the next day, George kind of explained to him what was going on. He's like, oh, well, if they want to interview me, I'll do an interview with him too. And that's how we got that interview. And for me, that's that stuck out the most during the entire process. The fact that the story behind it, and then we got the interview, and then – Unfortunately, he passed, but the significance of it being his last on-camera interview was crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a hard one to beat. <laughs> <laughs> That's why kind of I was going to say it. <laughs> All right. Now you got to top that one, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Hey, like, bitch. <laughs> Sunset was nice during your cigar. Just go ahead and say it, man. <laughs> uh... I don't know, man. There's so many. There's no, honestly, there's so many weird. This is that Miss America answer right yeah, here? Yeah, uh, world peace. <laughs> <laughs> and like such as, and so, yeah, but such as. Uh, no, I don't know, man. There's so many. There's so many like good memories we've had, of, especially over the last few years over cigars. Uh, uh, we were we were driving up. This is just, I don't know if this is the best one, so sorry, but like this is just what randomly came to mind. Um, so we'll have to just deal with it. But uh, we were actually driving up from Orange County to come back up to Sacramento one night. And um, our buddy Joel, uh, oh, like yeah. texts us, like right as we're passing through downtown LA. And he's like, hey, are you guys still in town? Because we, we had been in for a couple of days and we, you know, doing some, uh, we were filming with Pete and a few other people. And so he's like, hey, if you guys are still in town, meet us over at the Beverly Hills Hotel. We're gonna be smoking um, and just hanging out with a few people and whatever. And so we were literally passing through downtown LA. It was probably like 9 p.m. And we had a six hour drive up to Sacramento left. But we're like, fuck it, let's go. Beverly Hills Hotel, why not? Um, so we all, we went, we went out there, it was like Joel, Bunch Daniel of people, Marshall. Daniel Marshall, um, like the distributor for like Balvenie was there. So it was like, you know, unlimited pours of Balvenie all night, which was great. Mm -hmm. And at one point throughout the night, um, Joel hands me like, 
he's you know he's he's like such a cool dude, such a nice dude. He'll, he's always like sharing cigars, like rare and rare cigars, whatever. And he hands me um like a KSA, um one of the blue label ones, and I'm like, oh damn, that's kind of extra nice. <laughs> and so I start smoking it, whatever. He's like, oh, I ever tried the green ones? And I'm like, no, I've only ever had a blue one. So he hands me a, so I'm puffing like two KSAs at this point. Like he just hands me both. <laughs> They're not like one in each hand, believe it or not. I cut one of this hand. And uh and so I got like two KSA four scotch that I know what to do with. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, <laughs> all from like a simple text, uh, you know, like at nine PM and us just deciding like, yeah, why not? We'll just do yeah. it. I think like the, the biggest thing we we the most consistent phrase we said sort of throughout this whole process was like, what are the odds? Like what are the odds? this would happen. And it's just like always some crazy bullshit that we find ourselves in. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's the best, but it just like the first thing that came to mind, it was an awesome night and we still drove home to Sacramento, <laughs> which sucked. But all the way leading up until then was awesome. That's awesome. Go. What about you, bro? I, you know, I don't know that I have a single cigar <clears throat> memory that sticks out. I think just, you know, like before we came on the live here, uh, Jesse and, you know, you and I were talking and one of the things that, uh, Jesse was asking us was, you know, how long we've been doing this, we've been doing this for a couple of years. And just in the couple of years that we've been doing this, we've been smoking cigars for years. Um, but just in the two years that we've been doing this, like you said, uh, Steve, you know, it, that, that term comes up so much in this industry where it's like, I, I just can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> cameras on the fritz uh where you know you just can't believe that that happened and this seems to be one of those industries where that happens more often than not i think this whole two years that we've been doing this has been you know kind of a blur you know we've met some really incredible people that had we not been in the cigar industry or smoking cigars we probably never would have met and so i think that that's probably the thing that stands out to me the most what about you I think I think to me I think cigar kind of lets everybody's guard down. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. usually, usually when you meet people for the first time outside of smoking cigars, everyone has a shield up. Like, no, nah, I want to. Mm, don't say hi to me, bro. It's not you. Yeah. Know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, shout out to you know uh, Culebra Cigar Lounge out here in Rancho Cucamonga because that's kind of that's kind of our home spot right there. Yep. And we had a Super Bowl yeah. event down there, and it was a packed house. And we had, you know, shout out to Louis Cuevas and Denise Cuevas from the Casa Cuevas family. Yep. They were there. Our people from Dad Smokers Cigars were there. We yep. were there. And, you know, all of the patrons that kind of visit the lounge. But it kind of just brings together, like, no, when you smoke a cigar, no one cares what you do or who you are. Yeah. And we're all there under one roof enjoying a stick and having a conversation. Yep. It's, it's either about football you know, it's either about Bad Boy 3 that came out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's about, you know, whoever discusses politics when a poker game was going on back in the in the private room. Everyone's talking about something, you know, yeah. common. No one cares what you do for a living. No one cares what you drive. No one cares where you live. And I think, and it's not, it's not one specific memory. It's just memories that keep compiling on top of each other. That kind of just yeah. why I love being a part of all of this. And yeah, you don't see many people coming together in a, in a community like you do in the cigar industry. This this yeah. really does bring a lot of people together. Unless it's like you know little league baseball. You know, <laughs> well, then yes, yeah, people so. come together in little league baseball. You know, you got you know, social workers and sheriffs and corrections officers and you know yes. you know government employees coming together, pitching in, sponsoring teams. Good thing, but I, but outside of that, you don't see that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, gentlemen, what's what's next for the both of you? What's the next project? I think the next thing is kind of like moving on and, and never working together again would be really nice. Really good, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> we, I've had too much uh, <laughs> We're definitely not done with the cigar industry. We're still looking for some other projects to do. We're, we're working on some other projects we're not quite ready to announce yet. But uh, we're not done with the cigar industry. We're not done telling those stories. Okay. And uh, yeah, we just got some fun stuff, MMA uh, kind Ooh. of documentary kind of that we're in the works on, and and then our normal everyday bullshit that pays the bills. 
that you guys actually, aren't, are you guys aren't working with uh, what was it, Mick Dojo, are you? No, no. Okay, I know they're working yeah. on an MMA documentary as well. Uh, oh, not right. not exposing uh, the frauds in the MMA industry, the people that are the no touch and all that. So, no touch. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're all about yeah. touch. Lots of touch. <laughs> right? We don't have an HR department yeah. in this company. I'll tell you that. Yeah. We're the me too of touch right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, no, nah, just staying just busy. Just staying busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, so where can everybody find the documentary? Uh, Amazon. Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube now. You can buy it on YouTube. Uh, you can text me and I'll send you a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Ladies only, though. DMs. Uh, <laughs> slide in. <laughs> yeah, man. Just uh, hand rolled. Type it in anywhere and you'll, you'll, you'll find it for the most part. Yeah. Awesome. Good, man. So, I mean, all of our viewers that are watching, we have people come in. Um, come in and go out. So if you haven't seen Hand Roll, I mean, if you look, at, if you're looking to explore the cigar industry and know what's behind the stick that you're putting in your mouth and dragging, mm -hmm. Hand Roll is definitely the documentary you need to go check out so you can get some substance. On that, on that note, if I could just put out a challenge to you guys, viewers, okay. um, I would be really flattered if somebody put it on the Pirate Bay. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you made it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's some people out there that can make that happen. When you can All stream right. it for free on uh, on your Amazon Fire Stick, that's when you know you've made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, honestly, we'd love to just hear what people think of the film. Any critiques at all? Unless you don't like it, then shut the fuck up. But <laughs> any other positive criticism, like anything you want to say, like we answer all of our uh, DMs and stuff on on Instagram and Facebook. So. We'd love to hear people's opinion, man. Honestly, that's how we grow and become better as filmmakers. So, 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 so speaking of what, where can they find you on social media? Hand rolled on Instagram or Facebook, um, and then it's, it's at Garabine. Good luck spelling that. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Uh, and then Jay Mary, same fucking good luck with that shit. So, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, type in hand rolled, you'll be good to go. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of us. Well, gentlemen, we appreciate you taking the time to spend with us today and talk a little bit about the documentary and yourselves. Thanks so much for coming on. We Thank you, guys. Man. Let's do it again. All right. Brother Stogie, closing words. Closing words. Um, go oh, watch okay. roll. There you go. All right. We try to give you all some knowledge here. You know, we're not into smoking. This to be smoking. That's right. I mean, you can if you want. But you know what I'm saying? But we read the have some education yeah, you know, behind what you smoke. Hey, man. Go watch. Go watch hand roll. Go follow Jesse and Steve on Instagram. Follow Cigar Titans if you're not following already. If you're watching this video and you're not following us already, shame on you. <laughs> All right? Preach. Preach. You know what I'm saying? Right? Let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we have reached the end of this live stream. We hope you guys enjoy um, the education and the laughter and the, 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 the you know, the 1740. <laughs> Now you're on the level, bro. You need you two and a half glasses in. And, and 17, and I had a long, I had a, I had a, a nail in my sidewall of my truck tire. You know, one place tried to charge me six hundred dollars, another place tried to charge me four hundred dollars, and I finally found one for two hundred thirty-two dollars. Right, and I got to take care of it. It was one morning, and go. right now my son is a little league baseball practice, so it's a lot going drink on. Up, drink on a drink Saturday, and smoke so up. I need, I need, I need, I need a drink. You know what I'm saying? Hey. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Okay. If you haven't done us already, <laughs> shut up. Okay. If you haven't done so already, like the damn video. Okay. Comment the video. We like our know. likes. We like our likes. We Let us know likes. if you watched the hand roll video already. Let us know if you need some direction on how to go find the hand roll video. And we'll put that damn food comment we'll reply to you. That's it's right. on a trip. All right. So until next time. <laughs> live how you smoke. Smoke how you live. Nice move. Oh. There it is. You got there it. it is. I got it, man. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>